It's an unseasonably warm February day here in New England. So I thought I would do some wrench spinning uh, that I've been procrastinating because it's been too cold to work out in the garage. Ah, there she is, the Subaru Sandbar. 1995 KS4. Ain't she a beaut? It's a beaut, is a beaut. So being a novice to the K truck world, I bought this a few months ago. This uh the sandbar. And before buying it, I did some research as people do, fell down the rabbit hole. And um, the one thing I've learned, or one thing that seems to be a common uh, consensus in the truck market is it's 95. And from what I understand, sometimes these trucks sit for a while before being imported to America. Uh, and with that, with, you know, the, the old adage of uh, you don't use it, you lose it applies and the parts may or the gas lines may get clogged with old gas and uh, that sort of thing. So it's uh, just a good practice to start from zero when buying a vehicle. And by that, I mean just doing just doing a routine maintenance uh, as soon as you get it. So that's what we're going to do today. We're um, going to do some routine maintenance and uh we'll go from there um i bought these parts from ok garage um kevin james over there real stand-up guy i'll put a link in the description great guy check out his youtube i'll put a link for that too uh he he walks walks you through a lot of steps and uh, he provides a lot of parts that would otherwise be a challenge or difficult to go through. So let's go over what we got here. Um, first here is plug wires, spark plug wires. Um, gonna give the sandbar a tune up. Uh, the, uh, the spark plugs. Um, Kevin said they come pre-gap, but I'm gonna double check them um, before I put them in. Uh, you know, just, you never know during shipment, you know, it might've had a hard fall or something and, uh, you know, messed up a gap. We don't know, but it's better to err on the side of caution. Okay. Uh, headlights we're going to change. We're going to change out from standard incandescence to LEDs. Uh, that'll put less strain on the alternator and provide better light. Even though I don't really plan on driving this too much at night until I put a plow on it plow on the truck, where then obviously uh, you, we're gonna have to. So, um, you know, if it's snowing at night, okay? Oil change, of course, here's your oil filter. And uh, um, the uh, oil filter, new oil. Now in, in conjunction with that, you may notice we have some uh, RTV here. So, I noticed when I was crawling under the truck that there was a slight leak um, at the at the oil pan. So I'm going to pull the oil pan off, uh, clean it up, and put RTV on it. Um, it's a, it looks like a slow leak, but if I'm leaking oil, that's a concern. I never want to run out of lubrication. That's what she said. So we'll change that. Here is a fuel filter uh, to comment on what I said earlier in regards to the fuel, you know, this may be gummed up or, or clogged up. So we'll change that. Distributor cap to go along with the um, plug wires um, for the tune-up. An air filter, okay? So pretty, pretty much a routine, easy, easy thing going on today. Uh, I was gonna, I want to change out the I want to flush and refill the radiator, um, the uh, antifreeze, and I want to uh, replace the uh, gear oil, but that's going to be another another a job for another day. 
So uh, we've got a little bit of work ahead of us, so let's get to it. So here you can see the oil leak. The oil leak coming out. Looks like the RTV is failing here. So we're going to have to drain the oil and, and pull the oil pan and go from there. Hopefully that fixes our problem. Okay, we got the oil draining. Let that drip out for a while. Uh, it was really black. It was, it was really dark oil. I think needed an oil change anyways. Not that I wouldn't have anyways, but... Okay, we'll move on to the next thing. While this is draining, we'll do something else. Next, we're going to change the fuel filter, which is that right there. Okay. Um be much easier to get to if we take this wheel off. Now yeah, I could I could use the air gun if I wanted. It's only four lugs, and uh, it's not that bad. By the time I got the air gun hooked up, I could have it off anyway, so. And in case you're wondering, I do have jack stands underneath. Um, never rely just on your uh, your jack. Make sure you have jack stands underneath to support it. You don't want any vehicle dropping on you. It's bad news. Some handy dandy hose pliers. These things make uh, removing these things uh, a lot better than fiddling around with railroad pliers. Something like this. These uh, these pliers are awesome. What's not awesome is, uh... Get on with it. Yes, get on with it! At some point, I need to change out that fuel pump. It's, uh... It's getting a little... It looks a little iffy. I mean, I think... It'll be okay for a little while, but it's definitely, definitely on my to-do list. Okay, so that's that. Then it should just pop off. There we go. Old fuel filter is removed. Now, please note direction okay you got this lip here so when we go to put the new one on make sure that's facing the same way as a matter of fact let's see all right there's the old one this is the new one okay spit an image well one's clean and one's a dirty girl dirty dirty girl you did your work Time for a new one. Okay, so new hose on, new hose line. Just want to make sure. It's uh, out of frame here. Just when you get into this position, it's just easier to do it when it's off. That way you don't have to fiddle with it later. 
All right, there we go. She's on, she's nice and snug and tight. Slip her in. Okay, there she goes. Yeah, get the other line on. There we go. Put the clampy clampy back on. that all right we're gonna move on to the air filter it's right here on top through your uh, top access hatch for the sandbar pretty easy to do we just put these clips back take a peek now this air filter is fairly clean I'll save the old one you know just in case for a spare uh, the inside's actually pretty clean. It's it's a little dirty, but it's not awful. Um, but what happens is, is from the valve cover, there's a line that comes in. It's kind of for overflow of oil, and it deposits in there. The reason they deposit in there is, you know, they don't want oil dripping all over the road. Eventually, I will install a oil catch can, but... Uh, that's a project for another day. So we're just going to slip this oil, this air filter, sorry, this air filter uh, back in, or in, make sure we're seated, and clip them. And that's that. So now we're going to move on to the plugs. I got my key here. This is all you need to access the back. Push in, turn, and drop. And there we are. Now, one of the reasons I bought the sandbar over, say, a Suzuki or a Daihatsu or, um, was because the engine's right in back. It's, it's over the axle, and I like that for a couple reasons. Um, one, it's easy to access. You have four, uh, five points of access with the engine. You have the back, uh, the top. You can pull the tires off and access it from the sides or from the bottom. And the fact that it's sitting on the, it's right over the axle gives a good weight distribution because I plan on using this in the snow and the more weight you have over your tires, the better. So the, uh, the gap on the uh, spark plugs is 43 thousandths, 0 0.043. Um, and this is, uh, this is my gap checker. And you probably can't see, but we have 0 0.05, 0 0.18, 0 0.20, or 0 0.020, 0 0.018, 0 0.05. So 5 and 18 is 23, plus another 20 is 43. So that's how you get it. If if you're not in the know, that's how you stack them to get the uh, to get the proper. T -t Today, Junior. Um. Uh, thickness. And like I said, check them. They're all good. A good gap there so we can move on to plug wires plugs plug wires and distributor cap okay so we are ready to give this old girl a tune-up we have our plugs and our plug wires, and we have our distributor cap right there, okay? So, let's get to it. 
Now, because I'm old, feeble, and forgetful, um, I, uh, I labeled the wires um, in correlation with the distributor cap, with top being 12, closer to me is 3, further from me is 9, and bottom is 6. So this is the 3, <clears throat> and it goes to here. This is the 12, goes to the top. Um, 9 o'clock goes around back, and 6 o'clock goes around to the bottom here. Uh, I understand. I mean, with decaps, um, you know, you have to fire an order and stuff. But uh, uh, it's just a habit I've gotten into over the years working with uh, distributor caps and stuff. It's always good just to label wires and everything. Just uh, take some of the guesswork out of it. So I got that done. So now we're going to uh, pull, the, pull the wires off of the decap. I'm gonna pull the decap off too. that <clears throat> that's the distributor cap okay so I got the um, distributor cap off and the rotor off and put the new rotor on and um, I had a bit of a problem getting the rotor off. I had to uh, go a little barbarian on it. It wouldn't could just slide off. So I, um, I had to do other things to get it off. Basically I had to, I cut a slit in it and um, uh, cracked it open with a uh, screwdriver. That's uh not the best way to do things, but, uh, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So, what we can do now is uh, we can put the cap back on. And uh, with the cap, I already put the, the gasket on. So... If you're changing it, make sure you take care of that as well. So now we'll hook everything back up. Well, kind of. When we hook everything back up, we'll get uh, so just bear in mind if you're changing. Your rotor cap, or your rotor, I should say, uh, you may have difficulty removing it. Unfortunately, I don't have any dielectric grease on me or with me, so uh, that you know, otherwise I would have put that put that on just to uh, um, uh, just just for preventive measures in the future, but if I go to change it again, <clears throat> excuse me, I will uh, <laughs> I will probably just have to uh, do the same thing and go uh, go caveman on it. You know, it is what it is. I'm afraid. Okay, so 
I'm gonna clip the D cap back on. That's one. There's one in the back. There we are. And to access it from the top. That's the nice thing about these hay trucks, though, is they're, uh, they're easy to work on. All right, please hold. So this wire leads. This wire leads to the distributor cap. Now, to get to this, there is a, a tab in front. Let's see if I can sh show it. See that tab right there? There's a tab there and a tab to the back. You'll find right, right back here up top I'll show it I'll show it when I get it back on but there's a tab right up here so you pull those two tabs and the whole encasement falls away okay okay so the distributor caps on the plugs are on uh, I'm sorry the plug wires are on I apologize for um, kind of skipping that step i ran into a little bit of a problem the rotor was stubborn and coming off so i had to use some uh caveman tactics for it and uh so uh everything else is good to go i'm just going to change the plugs out now and uh we'll hook up the wires I got the oil pan off. It's there in the oil pan. Uh, yeah, uh, it's in the drain, uh, just dripping out. Uh, sorry, I didn't um, record it. I'm crawling under the truck. It's just uh, it was tough to um, to film under there. So. There's the oil paint off. I gotta clean off all that. Looks like it was kind of dripping right there. That's where my leak was. I really looked over the rest. The rest looks fairly okay. Uh, but, uh, so I'm gonna have to clean up all this. I have to clean all this up and then uh, uh, clean up the, uh, the oil pan too. Now, some of these nuts, of course, were very difficult to get to. What I did was I pulled, there's a black uh, cover here, and I pulled that off. It was only three screws, and I just kind of bent it, and not deformed it, but just, you know, wiggled it out. And uh, it, um, it made it a lot easier to get to uh get to stuff um yeah i'll show you what it looks like this is the cover uh yeah it's just three three 10 millimeter screws uh, 10 milli millimeter bolts uh this is where the the shock is let me take this off and it makes the job a lot easier i mean it's, it doesn't make it super easy but easier and when you're changing an oil pan um yeah easy is the name of the game now to get the oil pan out i uh i had to take disconnect this bar and bring it over just enough it was just enough to to uh 
to catch the oil pan, but I just, you know, unbolted it and swung it over and boom, oil pan dropped out. So there it is, all the RTVs cleaned off. Uh, there's flex in there too for me scraping it off and some of it fell. I got as much as of, it, of it out as I could. Hopefully there's nothing major in there. Hopefully the screen catches anything that might still be in there. And what that doesn't catch, the oil filter will catch. Uh, we'll see. I'll probably want to do an oil change again, probably in the not too distant future. Just that way anything that was stirred up uh, is collected in the filter and drain out the oil and hopefully whatever gets uh, gets uh, swept out with that. Uh, but right now we are up, uh, getting ready to uh, put the RTV back, uh, RTV on and get this uh, pan back on. Just as I suspected, hollow. Okay, so I managed to clean the uh, drain pan, the oil pan, I should say, uh, fairly well. Got as much of the RTV flex out of it as I could. Uh, so we're going to start going with the, uh, putting the new RTV on. So the directions for this. For best results, surfaces should be clean and dry, cut nozzle, and apply a continuous 1 16th to 1 quarter inch bead of silicone to one surface surrounding all bolt holes. Assemble parts immediately while silicone is still wet. Finger tighten until material begins to squeeze out around flange. Let dry for one hour until tighten. Oh, sorry, let dry for one hour then tighten to torque specifications. Allow 24 hours to fully cure before filling with fluids or returning to service. Replace cap after use. I know. A man reading directions. That does not make sense. Okay, so I'm not seeing any drips. He's dripping down. Everything looks good. Now this RTV takes 24 hours to cure, so it's been a day and approximately 24 hours, so it's uh, looks like we're good to go. So now's the moment of truth. Having removed the plastic inner wheel well here, uh, makes it really, really easy to get to the oil filter. Um, but if the, if the the plastic uh, inner wheel well uh, cover was here, uh, and you had the uh, clamp style um, oil filter removers, you could get it from the bottom. Or if you don't, you can always access it from the top. It's right. I don't know if you could see it, it's right there. So, you can just reach around and get it from in here. Uh, either way, it's uh, it's not difficult to get to at this point. Okay, so it's now a, a time to give a little bit of oil to the girl. I just gotta trickle it in. It's kind of awkward. Where the fill where the fill cap is, you know, usually on a lot of engines or most engines, the fill cap is on top. This one you just gotta don't rush it, or else we're gonna have spillage. Uh, sure, going get up there. Okay, so try to gluk 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 all of it out. Okay, so this takes 
This takes three liters, which is about equivalent to, uh, sorry, three quarts. So three liters is almost equal to three quarts. And just take it easy, go nice and slow. You don't go slow. If you don't take it easy, you're gonna have a mess on your hands. All right. And the, uh, the dipstick is right there. So we'll check the oil level. And then we'll go down to the bottom and see if uh, we have any leaks. Um, and then we should be about ready to start her up. Okay, here we are, the moment of truth. Oh yeah, she's sounding nice, real nice. Oh yeah, she's sounding good, she's sounding strong. Oh, she's a happy girl now, she is a happy girl. Okay, so the Subi is back in action for the most part. Now there's our, there's our RTV right there. Oh, I don't know if you can see it, there's some of it. She's done cured. She's good to go there. Um, so since I failed to show taking off the uh, inner wheel wheel well here i will show you how to put it back on and i don't know just play the video in reverse or something so so this is the piece and right here it's gonna go like this and this this piece goes right behind the shock so what do we got here we got we got three we got two screws a, a screw a bolt and a nut okay so where do they go so we have the screw which is right there goes up here and the bolt goes here <clears throat> and the nut underneath you'll see that there's there's the bolt there and that's gonna drop right stay uh, right down here okay so it takes a little bit of finagling to get it in um, I think I can get it in cold. If not, I'll put the heat gun to it just to make the plastic a little pliable. Um, not hot enough to deform it. Just basically warm enough as equal to like if it sat out in the in in a summer sun for you know a few hours. Just you know just to heat it up. But we'll see. I don't think I'll be able to. I, I pulled it out cold, and I think I'll be able to put put it in cold. So when I pulled it out, I had to go at an angle. So it kind of goes at an angle like this. And we 
just gotta kind of find and I'm probably gonna have to push a little wiggle a little Finagle a little to get past the shock there. That's it. There we go. Slip it in like that. And then everything will, everything will line up for you. There's a, there's a key here. It's pretty, pretty obvious. It just flips, clips over like that. You'll see the contour here, and this will line up. And then the, the screw on the bottom will line up. Yep, it's already seated in. I found it's found it seating. So these are all 10 millimeter. So we will just. Basically, from what I've experienced, the 10 millimeter seems to be the, the coin of the realm here for, uh, for working on these trucks. Uh, well, I mean, almost. I mean, the, uh, the, uh, The um, oil pan is 12 mil, uh, 10 mil, and that, that bolt I had to take out to move that bar to get to the, uh, to get, to move it so I could get to the oil pan was, uh, I think, I think it was, uh, 14, I want to say, if memory serves me, I think it was 14. She's a little crooked, make sure she's going in kind of straight. All right. That one. Yeah, and that's all there is to it. And that's what it looks like. This this piece right here. That's all there is to it. So um, if you need to access, well, it'd be the driver's side engine. You need to access the dri uh, dri uh, sorry, driver's side. Um, then uh, that's all you gotta do. You gotta take out this, this, and one down here, and just kind of tilt it, and just kind of work it out this way, and uh, you'll have access. You'll have access to the oil filter, uh, the alternator, everything that's on this side. Okay. So in regards to the distributor cap, that, um, the rotor, I'm sorry, that, that didn't come off. As far as the rotor that uh, refused to come off, what I had to do is, you can see, I had to score right there. So I took a, I, I took a utility knife and I just scored a little bit here, okay? And then I took a screwdriver and I just tapped lightly, just enough to, to widen it, just enough so I could slip it off because it was really stuck on there.
So here's the difference between old oil and new oil. This is old oil. See how runny it is? See how dark it is? Okay. And this is new oil. Nice and golden, almost a honey color.